<laughs> I mean, to- when you say iconic, I mean, hold on, wait one second. Hold on, wait. That's what I'm it's, uh, um, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Legendary. Oh, I mean, she is, I know, right? <laughs> Thank you so much. She is, um... <laughs> Logan Clark. Oh, hi! Hi! How's it going? (laughs) How's it going? Oh my god! This is so exciting. First of all, I'm a huge horror fan, and I'm like been like totally like looking at all the things in the background. I'm like, I love your poster. I love the guy from um monster. What was it? Ah, real monsters. We got Pee Wee Herman. I named my cat after Pee Wee Herman. This is going to be a great time. Yes. What's your cat's name? Pee Wee, we just oh, dropped the Herman. Okay. Yeah. You dropped the Herman. Understandable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, Logan, it's funny because the first thing we wanted to talk to you about was um, I hear that you might be attending a premiere tomorrow. Is this a thing that I am? Happening? How do you know this? Oh my God, you guys definitely did your research. I am. Well, <laughs> it's not a premiere. I will be. They did, they did, unfortunately, because of the unfortunate surge of um, COVID 19 and the Omicron, whatever. Um, they canceled the red carpet premiere of Scream, uh, the 2022. However, I am very excited because I got tickets to the midnight showing, which is the 10 mm-hmm. o'clock showing. Um, and I bought 24 <laughs> tickets. Um, and so I've been inviting everybody I know. And I'm really excited. It's uh, my friend's birthday. It's my partner's birthday on Friday. So it's a lot going on, but um, I'm really excited. <laughs> I've been a huge Scream fan since before I can remember. It's what actually like inspired me to get into TV, film, media, entertainment wow. um, was the first one. I remember watching it, it was on Fox actually. And <laughs> I went downstairs and I got an, uh, a blank VHS. I popped it in, I hit record play. I turned off <laughs> the TV. And I watched it the next day when my parents were at work and I was just like, I want to do this. Like, I want to create, you know, media. And um, yeah, and so it's it's exciting for me because it's the first time I have seen, I did see Scream 4 in theaters, but I didn't get to see any of the original, one, two or three. Um, so I'm excited. It's the first time I'm seeing like as an adult. So. Oh my gosh. Oh my God. Yeah, know, it's, it's exciting. Yeah. Danica, did we see Scream in theaters? We sure did. We were way too young, but we sure did. (laughs) Just like the OG we saw as as youngsters, we were probably too young to have seen them. Thanks, Mom. (laughs) I know. Yeah, our parents were like, yeah, like, let's go see Austin Powers. And then we have to sit there awkwardly like, what did we just saw? Yeah, I went and saw a scary movie with my dad and my cousin. That's and that, that was, was the, the most, they're probably watching this right now, but hands um, down. it was yeah, really hands awkward. Down and um, anyways, so, but hands yeah, we're down. excited. Um, and I know you've had David Arquette on your show before. Yeah. I actually, um, I met David Arquette once. I was um, at a car wash in um, uh, Venice and I was going to use the restroom and he was in the restroom before I went into the restroom. And I said, oh, are you David Arquette? And he said, yes, I am. And I took a photo with him and that was it. So, um <laughs> But you know, I work with a lot of celebrities, and I'm very thankful for that, and 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 get to meet a lot of really cool people. But I try not to like fangirl over too many. Um, but I would say anybody in the Scream universe is usually one where I'm like I'm very excited. So well, side side note, um, because it is a very controversial topic, uh, we have to talk about Courtney's bangs in was it part mm. three. Do you have any thoughts I mean, or feelings? The, my, my, my official statement on the bangs are <laughs> too short. Too short? They were too short. <laughs> and it, by the way, it was her, I have rated um, as a gay, you rate which um, Courtney Cox look is your favorite. And it does go for me, um, it goes, well, including five, it goes five, four, one, two, three. Okay. So there you go. Yeah. So three's on the, uh, okay. Bottom of the and- list. And I, I know it was David's idea to cut those bangs as well. So there you go. Yeah. See, yeah. she was just saying she they were just on Drew Barrymore's show yesterday and they were talking about the bangs. And she told <laughs> the story of like the squeal that came out of her when she saw how short they were. It reminded me of those Instagram videos where you see like the bang fails, where like they've curled it for too long and the hairs fall out. Yeah. 
Um, yeah. That's why I imagine what happened inside that trailer that day. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> a sad, sad day, but it seems like we've remedied no bangs in part five. So yeah, yes. I'm very excited Thank as God. well. Do, uh, so you mentioned that you like horror in general. Uh, yeah. In addition to Scream, do you have any other favorite horror franchises? I mean, I really am an equal opportunity digester when it comes to it. I mean, of course, the classics, Halloween, um, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, uh, you know, anything and everything, Wes Craven, John Carpenter. Um, of course, uh, Ready or Not, because of our, our new directors for the Scream franchise. Um, but I will say, fun fact, you've heard it here first, uh, my very first thing I ever did that was in front of the camera or had to do with the camera was a horror film called Swamp Zombies. And Swamp Zombies can be found on YouTube in its entirety and Amazon for purchase because, you know. Um, and it starred the Blue Meanie. You know the Blue Meanie, Brian. Yes. yes. So so him and Jasmine St. Clair. And, you know, it was I was like a senior in high school and um, and got to, and I was the lead zombie. I died in the first scene, which is why oh, me congrats. and Drew Barrymore, me and Drew Barrymore are like kindred souls like that. Um, but I came back as the lead zombie and killed a bunch of people and then I died last. So I had a very poetic journey. Um, but yeah, so, so I've always really loved horror. Um, and you know, I've, I've been lucky to go to a few conventions and, and, you know, because I'm in LA, um, you have access to so many different things that pop up. Um, so I try to take part in, in as much as possible. Yeah. H have you watched Terrifier? Okay. No, I have not watched Terrifier. Okay. Ooh, I need to watch that one. I'm ready to jump on the bandwagon. Right Terrifier, because <laughs> the next down? Terrifier is, is coming out this year. Terrifier is, oh boy. Um, it's, it's a rough ride. Yes. It's in the lot. best way possible. Yes. Yeah. In the best way. It's not like Troll 2 rough ride. No, no. Okay. <laughs> God, no, no. We wouldn't do that okay. to you. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No, no. You're, you're going to love it. So I, I can't wait for you to watch it and enjoy it. And everyone else watching Terrifier, please, please, please watch. Okay, anyway. does have a very good question. Oh, yes. Know, what is your favorite kill from Ooh. a horror movie? Mm, that is a good question. Favorite kill. Wait, you guys go first, and then I'll, and then I'll think of mine. Okay. Ooh. First one that comes to mind, like, so this is just, like, off the cusp, right? I'm going to go Jason with the sleeping bag from the Friday mm. the 13th. So sleeping bag, tree. Um, but there's also a really good one in Terrifier, and I don't want to mm. spoil it for you. But that's probably up there, too. Okay. Oh, my, because it's so ludicrous. My favorite one is, um, uh, it's not dust. Hold on. Fuck. What's it called? Um, oh my God. Now, how am I blanking on the name of this? Um, it's what does it rhyme with the, the one that happens in Texarkana. Oh, I'm not too familiar with that. Oh, fuck. Um, but it's the one where the woman is tied to a tree and he's got, the killer's got a trombone and a knife at the end of the trombone and repeatedly stabs her into the tree with the trombone. That it's sounds like a fusion between perfect. like what I do for work now and like my pat, like a music, like <laughs> massacre, musical massacre. <gasps> I mean, that's something we should do. Mm -hmm. A musical massacre, a musical horror movie. Okay. Have they done one? Um, well, done Evil one? Dead. Yeah, I mean, yeah, under, yeah, yeah, but that's, that's but bring the musical version to film. I'm, there, I'm all about that. I'm right. here for that. Let's get Bruce um, Campbell on the yeah. Go. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> um, I mean, I obviously want to go to a stream movie just because we were talking about it. I will say it's very cliche, but I think that um, I think that that Drew Barrymore's kill at the beginning of screen it was very much it was genre defining, and I think it was tone setting for 25 years you know what i mean which i think was incredible i think nobody expected that um because she was the it girl she is she i'll still say she is the it girl um <laughs> but i will also say there was something very passionate about the uh kill of randy uh in screen two because he was a fan favorite and um and billy's i mean spoiler alert but billy's mom <laughs> is the is the killer um, and, and because he was talking yes, smack yeah. on it, it was the whole thing. And I found out that sh there's actually a hidden, there's two hidden um, Easter eggs in that scene when the reveal happens. One is there's a lipstick kiss on his hand that you can't really tell because there's so much blood. And then the second is that there's a, uh, a monitor in the news van and there's a female reporter, which was supposed to point towards Debbie Salt being oh. a female reporter. 
So huh. there you go. Oh. So anyways, yes, those Clever. would be my two, I would say. Okay. Great, great options. Mm. Great options. Okay. <laughs> All right. Nice. Danica? All right. Well, we actually wanted to ask, um, what would you say has been the most bizarre or maybe unique show that you've ever either produced or cast for? Mm. Bizarre or unique? Listen, I've done... I've been very fortunate to do a lot of really cool shows um, and, and being able to tell a lot of people's stories. I would say um, I can see your voice has been such a passion of mine because I was brought in by our showrunner, James McKinley from the beginning um, and helped, you know, develop and, and kind of, you know, find the cast. It's funny in my office that um, I, again, I, I'll say this story again. It's weird for me to call you Heather or Kid or anything <laughs> besides the wrestling announcer because that's the only like name I knew associated with you. Um, so, it, but you wouldn't know it, but like we had offices, obviously production offices. And in my office, I had hanging up seven photos and those seven were from the pilot, the, the secret voices from the pilot of I Can See Your Voice. And in the original version of the show, there were seven secret voices and um and so obviously reiterations and changes and format tweaks um but uh so so for me it was always really exciting to find talent that hadn't been discovered or had their moment and be able to you know make some fun with it and, and have some fun with it and make some magic um i also do a show called legendary for hbo max um yes. which is um i just last night you guys got to go to the hotel and we kicked off season three um, and we got to get, the, I, I passed the baton, you know, from casting to the producers. And, um, that show is just so special because it's the story of like the, the underdogs, you know, the people that have been marginalized and discriminated against because of, you know, for some, some times for who they are, as, you know, being gay or for the color of their skin or whatever it may be. And it's, it's insane. But I remember again, getting a call saying, hey, I have a show, it's called Legendary, it's about the underground ballroom scene. And of course, we all knew Paris <laughs> is Burning and Pose, um, but I had not uh, really known a ton about the space. So I was like, new project, jumping head first. And um, I, I didn't really have a community as a gay man. Like, I wasn't like, oh, this is my, tr like, these are my people, or like, this is my tribe. And so when I started working on Legendary, I had the opportunity of talking to these incredible human beings with so much, so much to share with the world, including their talent. And it's like, I kind of found my purpose in the LGBT community, which is to help tell the stories of the ballroom community. Um, so for me, those are the two things. I Can See Your Voice is like my baby and legendary. Um, I'm just like really proud of it. And it's, you know, it's really important um, as well. So mm -hmm. those yeah, would be the two projects, yeah. That, that is so awesome. And Legendary, you mentioned, was on, that's HBO, correct? Yeah. HBO Max, yeah. So it's HBO, HBO Max. Max. Um, season one and season two are streaming now, so catch up. Um, <laughs> and season three is coming this year. Um, and we're just getting ready to start filming. Um, and I don't know what the COVID protocols are, but I'm, I know that we're, um, well, I won't say anything else. I'll, I'll, I'll leave it at that. But I think it's exciting for people <laughs> in LA die. if you want to go to see something really cool. I think we're going to have an audience back, but I'm not sure. So I shouldn't say it. Yeah. Okay. Wait, yeah. Time, time shall tell. Okay. Yes. Since, since you briefly in passing mentioned Pose, if I saw Billy Porter, just like even like within like a couple feet of me, I don't think I could survive it. Like I, uh, yeah, that's, that that's legit. legit. I, I, I couldn't agree more. I have currently, I don't know if my partner is watching this right now, but he will po poke me later for saying this, but I have an unhealthy obsession with Billy Porter's new song called Children. Um, okay. And every single morning I will make my cup of coffee and I will put it on the sunnets downstairs, full blast, and I will just walk and strut this whole house just waking up to this song called Children. So um, that's a huge I mean, I have to Billy. tell you, there is nothing unhealthy about an obsession with Billy Porter. No. <laughs> and I, I forget. I, I think it was the Academy Awards. I, I'm not certain where yes. during one of the breaks he's saying, don't rain on my parade. Is that what, oh, that yes, was, yes, right? yes. I think that was the, uh, the Oscars. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just, you know, off the cusp, like uh, just better than Barbara almost. I'm sorry. Like it was, it was. So now talk about controversy. There you go. That's controversial. <laughs> right. I know. Let's go. Bangs and Barbara. That's, that's what we're bringing here. But uh, so just, 
just to oh gosh um it, uh, this is hard because we had talked about it a little bit before um we went live and um we were talking about the incredible wonderful bob saget who unfortunately passed this week mm -hmm. and you know he's had an impact on so many people in so many positive ways everyone that knew him loved him and he was a celebrity panelist and i can see your voice in season one so i wanted to know about you know your opportunity getting to meet with uh and work with bob saget bob saget man he it was um well first of all like talk about like quintessential like tv dad you know what i mean like i think a lot of us grew up and he was danny tanner you know uh mm -hmm. he was america's funniest video funny some videos mm -hmm. um you know that cheesy set with the balloons that dropped at the, at the end um <laughs> that theme song red white and blue I'm running a thing on the hey. um i <laughs> i feel like um <laughs> when when we booked him when our when our show booked him i was like this is so cool like and, and also he has a reputation in the, in the comedy world stand-up comedy world for being a little bit left of center than Danny he's Taylor, blue right yeah he, yeah blue. exactly <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and and um and 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 that was it was really exciting to meet him just because you know it's bob saget but talking to him and getting to work with him was you know it was incredible he was you know so electric and so excited and so invested with the show i think that's the thing that you probably saw when you were on your when you, when you were on your episode but the, the panelists like this isn't just like a gig for them like they're all obviously booked and they're doing their thing but like they get really invested in the in the detectiveness of it all right like they're they're, they're these armchair detectives all of a sudden trying to figure out and help that person win a hundred thousand dollars <laughs> and um and one episode i know it was ross and ross was playing for silver whiskers which was his um charity for um like adult like adult cats or something mm -hmm. and um he he was talking about like i grew up with you bob like you were my childhood um and you know it was like everybody kind of collectively got that like you know tear in the eye moment because it's it's incredible that one person can uh, can connect with so many people on kind of like the same level um and he was just the kindest nicest he did some videos for um for our showrunners kids um just just a really 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 awesome guy um gone way too soon and um i know that everybody at you know fox fae um and and obviously i can see your voice matt singer all send their condolences to him and his family and all of um, you know, those affected by his passing just really, it really sucks. It really sucks. And it was, you know, right after we had lost Betty White, um, and, and you know, and, then, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. and so yeah. it's just been, I'm hoping like we can, and then that's it, you know, and then yeah. we're done. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's, um, it's, it's interesting because like I said, I, I don't know what I'm allowed to say about my experience other than it was phenomenal and fantastic, but had Bob been one of the celebrity panelists, I don't think I could have kept it together. I, I really think, <laughs> first of all, I just have been like, oh my God. <laughs> but I think I would have laughed or cried or, you know, it's it's just, ah, uh, man, he, what a wonderful human. And yeah, I echo your sentiments about, um, yes, he, he will be messed, so. Yeah, ah, absolutely. All right. yeah. Well, just to keep going a little bit on this train, but to kind of pivot, I guess, a little bit. Um, we like we like pivoting here. That's fine. Um, pivot. It's like a friend, it's like a friend episode. Pivot. <laughs> pivot. <laughs> so uh, this is a little bit weird, also. But um, what would you want your secret voice identity to be? Oh my gosh, we have talked about this so many times, like okay. in production <laughs> meetings. I don't have a clear answer, so I'm going to make something up while we're talking. But okay. I will say there has been so many conversations about like. I wonder if like Saturday Night Live will do like a spoof of us and it'll be like, you know, like, oh, like the cigarette smoker and it's like somebody smoking a cigarette, you know what I mean? Or like, like, like the drunk and it's like somebody smashes a bottle. Um, I, oh my God, my, I hope so. I know, right? Um, what would my secret voice be? Hmm. I think it would be something along the lines of like, God, I don't know. Maybe like the the like um, the horror like, fan. 
the horror fan or like I was also thinking like the type A, like I'm very like particular about things like colors, like you can see my colors behind me. Like I like things like in certain like I'm very type A like that, like a little like, you know, O C D the O C maybe the O C D, maybe ADHD. I don't know. Something like that probably. I love it. Um, so unique. <laughs> so <yes>. different. <laughs> and you're the wrestling announcer, but Danica, um, what would your secret voice be? So curious. Oh, Jesus. We've talked about this too, but I think you've already had a couple things that I would have said. Um, like the director, because that's mm -hmm. I am a theater director. Okay. By by trade. Um mm -hmm. Uh, but but you can know. get more you can get more specific. You could be like the Shakespearean director. Mm -hmm. Hmm. We had a dance director about. season one. We had a dance director season one. Mm -hmm. well, we could do, and I could see you with like you could be like the like the stage director or like the the um the theater director oh, and like with the there. You said theater professor. That's also the theater yeah. professor. professor. Yeah, exactly. and that's mm -hmm. a lot of times. By yeah. the way, we have, and not to get too much into how the sausage is made, if you will, but like <laughs> these, the, you know, I, I obviously oversee casting and producing for for the performances. Um, and so it is a real think tank about like how we pitch, you know, people to 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 the group mm -hmm. um, in casting and then how their character morphs in producing, producer land. Um, and so we do sometimes have to lean into teacher, professor, director, you know, scholar, um, those worlds. So I, th I think that makes total sense. I like that. The theater yeah, I could also, I could also be the, uh, the fight choreographer. Ooh, I like that. This, yeah. this, and I can wield the, swords and things. Yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. Gosh, you, you have so many different, you've got a lot. You <laughs> I, I do a lot. Doing. It's theater. I like That's that. what happens. <laughs> We're just speaking here. Could be the, the dialect ball. coach. Uh, I do that dialect too. Coach, yes. Mm -hmm. See, that would be an interesting one to have a dialect coach because the, I could see the the panel being like, okay, so she's the dialect coach. So we have to watch the way that she enunciates. We have to watch how she uses her vibrato, her throat, like all of those things. I think that they would try to dial. Oh yeah, I wouldn't have thought of that. Hmm. Mm. So there you go. Mm. They're they're very on top of that too. Like they they're <laughs> like if you, if you breathe like on a wrong beat, you're you know. <laughs> I, I already have my um, my guesses for tomorrow's episode, so I'm like, <laughs> I think playing along is like my favorite part. Oh, like, yeah, it's I'm, so much fun. Seriously, um, my family and I are all in a competition, so well, I'm I'm <laughs> honestly between us, Logan, I'm the worst at it. Like, at playing the game. Yes. <laughs> really? for, for the holiday episode, I miss them all. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know if I was that bad. But here's yeah. the thing, too. Like, there are so, and you know this, you were in the room. Like, you could, like, think that you know this game. Like, Cheryl and Adrian. Like, we had so many conversations about, like, okay, well, Cheryl and Adrian are going to be in the room for every single episode. They're going to become masters. They're going to become scholars, professors. They're going to become, going to do, like, master classes on how to tell this stuff out. And we still are able to trick them. So um, it's just, and you know what that goes into? That goes into the, the, I have to give a quick shout out to the producers, the choreographers, the vocal coaches, all, the team that truly makes I Can See Your Voice happen. Um, because, I mean, you know this, you went through the process and the boot camps and, and, and everything, but it is 100% a village that makes this show happen. And there's so much magic in it as well. Um, I will say, and I don't want to call any specific secret voices out, but I will say that doing this now for two seasons, there's a lot of people, generally I will say it's the bad singers, but there's a lot of people that have come into our world, maybe not feeling 100% like confident in themselves. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden they've got producers, choreographers, vocal coaches, executives, all being like, yeah, like you're awesome, like applause. And they leave so confident. And so, and in the right way, right? Like their their confidence is just restored. And I can remember this woman um, after her episode. She said that was the most fun I've ever had in forty years. And um, and and one oh, gentleman said, I've never had so many people want to talk to me. And that really, it really hurt my heart because I was like, oh my god. But then I was like, this is such an experience. And it's something that I'm really passionate about. Is that we are creating a television show. We've got budgets and schedules and timelines so much that we have to track but this is also an experience for every person that's in front of the camera and so we try to make it an experience um and and a happy one and 
you know, we lined the, I know one thing in this past season, we lined the dressing room hallways with uh, black and white photos of all the winners from season one, just to oh. inspire everyone for season oh. two. So, <laughs> so we'll do the same thing for season two. So you should get ready for your photo to be up on the wall. Hopefully that will get a season three. We haven't got announced yet, but um, I'm hoping we'll have a season three. Fingers, toes, everything. I, I would everything. imagine you would. I mean, it's yeah. so it's so much fun. I hope so. Yeah. I hope so. And you talked about playing it with your family. And I just wanted to say this too, because um, season one, episode one, uh, the contestant's name was Shannon. Um, and there was a girl that was on the show, um, The Secret Voice, and her name is slipping in my head right now. But um, I was on Twitter, like when the when the episode airs on the East Coast, I'm on Twitter, I'm on Instagram, I'm interacting, I'm, you know, I've got like my iPad, my two screen, like I'm, it's just like the the motherboard. And I, um, I saw a photo come up uh, after the episode aired of, it was like a piece of paper, right? And it just like had a bunch of stuff written on it. And they flattened it out and they put it on the table and they took a photo of it. And it was all the names of the secret voices and who had guessed what. And it was written in a kid's handwriting. Like, you know, like a seven-year-old's handwriting. And I just got so emotional because I was thinking, these families are popping the popcorn, pouring the, the, the drinks, sitting down as a family and watching our show and guessing and playing along. And like, I just got to like dial back to like when I did that with my family and, you know, the, the laughter and the like, oh my gosh, like I told you, like moments in that <laughs> living room. Uh, with these these people, and I know Ken had reposted that on Twitter, um, but it, it's just you know the show is it's a really special show, and I do think that there's a lot of light in the bottle with it, and and um, you know we're just so thankful that we we've been able to come back and do a season two, and and hopefully we'll be able to do a lot more. Yeah, I think so. I think it's going to go for thirty seasons. Oh, so. okay. Well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be older. I'll be on the. Well, I remember back in season two, <laughs> you had the purple hair. <laughs> oh, I, I miss the hair, Logan. Should I go back? I, I'm, I'm contemplating. I don't know. What I'm to always do. cool with it. I love the. By the way, you are your hair game is always on fleek. Um, <laughs> but I will say that I love the purple hair. But I think you should just let it. Like you don't want to get people to get too used to it. You know, it's nice to pull it out once in a while. I know. I'll right. switch it up. No, you're right. you're right. You have a great you have a great canvas to work with. So yes, I have. If a, I did that, you. it would just be like it would be awkward. Like I just <laughs> gave a little, like, half my hair was purple. Be like, what's you know, midlife crisis. See, when you do it, it's beautiful. When I do it, it's midlife crisis. It's um, I'm sorry, I'm older than you, so. Well, I mean, but no one be able to tell because I mean, <laughs> you're <laughs> <in the laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> Well, another thing I wanted to mention was you were talking about, you know, like all the wonderful positive energy that's just generated during the show. So I want to know from your perspective, what kind of energy or excitement do you experience as you're watching these things unfold in front of your eyes? Because obviously you have the best seat in the house and you get to watch the entire process. I'll tell you, it's it's a mix of, I just got like a little jolt of it when you asked me that question. Um <laughs> It's a mix of nervous energy and like proud dad. You know, it's like I I know that we work so hard to get everyone to feel super comfortable and 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 prepped for their moment. Um, and nobody knows what the moment is, right? Especially this season. Like season one, it was a pre-baked pack of three that came down, did their thing, one went away. This time for season two, rules have changed. So the contestant gets to choose two secret voices. So we never know which two are going to go together. Um, and so it's it's really interesting. And and we just try and prep people as much as possible. And um, yeah, I would say like I I get really excited about you know there's definitely um, songs I get really excited about like that are personal favorite songs of mine. Mm -hmm. And then there's like your song by the way, which is one of my all time favorites. And I, I, I just was actually playing it the long, cause, because for time, sometimes we have to trim some of the tracks. And so your lip sync, there was like one line that got removed. It was like, and it was like the dun 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 and right. I was like, no, we had to lose it. But um, I was listening to um, the long version um, the other day. And I mean, it's like seven seconds longer. But 
Um, yeah. It's just such a good track. And like, there's so many great tracks this season. We've got some really cool hybrids. Um, I don't want to give too much away, but we've got a Britney Spears song that's bent into a whole different genre. We've got a, um, we've got Bad Guy, Billy Eilish, that is completely in a different genre. Um, so we've really done some, some genre bending, which is really exciting. Performances are bigger. We've got, um, you know, additional performers as part of their eliminations. We've got special effects. Um, I think we saw in the promo for tomorrow's episode, we actually have an aerialist um, on tomorrow's episode, a circus performer. Um, so it's, it, there's a lot of work that goes into all of it. And um, yeah, I can't remember what the question was now because I went on a tangent, but. Um, your, your excitement uh, behind, yeah. No, no, my you're... excitement, yeah. And, and I can tell you like, everybody always makes fun of me, but like, I am like, about, you know, I'm like, I'm totally into the song. Like I am giving energy because I want the energy back. So it's like, I can't, you know, I don't even have a chair I sit in. Um, it's just, it's a lot of fun. And everyone always says their favorite part of, um, of the show is, you know, obviously the secret voices and all the performances, but also just watching me do my thing <laughs> because I am my own show. Um, you, you, you are. When, uh, when, when did we get the Logan Clark experience? Well, you know, it's funny because, um, I don't know if you know this, but we, so before every show, and this is out there because um, Nick Lachey actually posted it, but before every show, um, the celebrity comes in and they have to rehearse their song because they don't know if they're going to be with a good, they genuinely do not know if they're going to be with a good singer or a bad singer. So they have to rehearse with a good singer, which is generally a vocal coach because they're all great singers. And then they rehearse with a bad singer as to how that goes. And I am always the bad singer. Aww. And that's why I'm a terrible singer, by the way. Like, I'm, I can carry now. I can, after a vodka said I'm a great singer. Um, <laughs> but I will say that I, I really turn it up for the bad singing because I want them to really, like, like be pushed to, like, laughing during their song. And I have recorded every single one of those performances. So I have, like, 24 performances with celebrities of me just performing terribly. And I was like, this is a TikTok, and I want to post it so bad. Obviously, I can't. But um, Nick Lachey did post on his Instagram. So if you go into his Instagram, you can see me singing terribly with um, Nick Lachey. And uh, it's a lot of fun. You know, it's a lot of fun. And they get a kick out of it, too. See, I think boy bands are coming back. So if they ever need another member of 98 Degrees, I think we know how to I call. Mean, <laughs> I can turn that right up. We will dial it up to 98.5. Oh, uh, with perfect. Addition. There you go. Done. <laughs> Love it. Perfect. Uh, Danica? Okay, so um, this is kind of a, a pretty big question. And sorry, I've been on mute, but um, my dogs are here and uh, one of them is losing his mind in the other room. So, <laughs> no, I, I have two downstairs that I, you know, at this point, I'm like, well, oh, one oh, of them we'll talk about the dogs. <laughs> Don't worry, we'll talk about the dogs. <laughs> Dog. <laughs> so, the big question is. So we we kind of know now because of your your love of scream how you kind of got into this world. Mm -hmm. um, but what advice do you have for anybody who is also interested in getting into this kind of field? Okay, so two avenues of this because you know I am casting background, so my advice will come from two different perspectives. One is going to be for people who want to be in front of the camera. My number one, if I ever did a master class, hi, I'm Logan, and welcome. This is my master class. Um, this is my master class. If you want to be on a reality show, if you want to be on a scripted show, if you want to be on anything where somebody has to find you and call you and book you, make a Google number, make a Google voicemail um, number, make a Google account, put your phone number and your email address in the bio of every single social media thing you have. Because I will tell you, there are so many people we reach out to through DMs that just never check their, you know, if they're not following you, you can't get to them. And so they never know until it's way too late that we've been trying to get a hold of them. So I will say that is my number one thing. If you want to be discovered, put something out there that we can discover you with. So that's my number one thing for people who want to be in front of the camera. And, and what I was trying to say is like, if you don't want to put your real phone number out there, just like make a Google voice. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or if you don't want to put your real email address, make a, a fake Google email address. Um, but for those that want to be, you know, producers, um, people that are, you know, maybe you want to get into the production side of things, your, uh, you know, logistics, your, um, you know, you want to get into the finance aspect of the world. I would say, first of all, is like, connect yourselves with as many people as possible, because I cannot tell you, um, long, very long story short, I lived in LA, I, I moved to LA to, um, to, 
you know, get my feet wet. I started working on American Idol and Dancing with the Stars as a PA. And I was still working full time back east. And so I would work Monday and Tuesday in LA. And then I would fly back Wednesday, Thursday, Friday and work in these guys. I did that for about nine months. And then, you know, it kind of was like a lot. And so um, I, I moved here full time. And then I kind of got swept by the love bug. And I went overseas to Australia and lived there for three years. Um, and that relationship dissolved, so whatever. But we're back in LA. And the first phone call I had with every single person that I had worked with was like, hey, I'm back, I'm available. Hey, I'm back, I'm available. Hey, I'm back, I'm available. And just putting yourself out there and not being afraid of no. You know, everyone makes fun of that Lady Gaga quote, like, you could get 99 no's, but like, you just need one yes. Like, whatever it is, right? Whatever the, the quote is. Um, but really putting yourself out there. And then here's the other thing too, because a lot of people will give you an opportunity but you really have to do something with that opportunity, right? Because just because you've been, maybe I recommended somebody, they said, okay, great, he's gonna be booked for the job. Now you've got to prove yourself. Like I used to always say, like I was hired as a PA for years. I mean, that's just what you do when you first come to town, you're PA and you start to meet people and you know, people see people with potential. And I was like, if I'm gonna make coffee, I'm gonna make the best fucking coffee. And if I'm gonna make those copies, they're going to be the best fucking copies and they're going to have staples that are all in the same direction and they're going to have paper clip and they're all going to be bound together and they're going to be pretty and it's not going to be like it's not going to look like a blanche from the you know secretary from greece has her fingers all over it like <laughs> i am going to make sure that i'm doing the best possible job you know i i started working when i was really young i started working when i was like 13 14 um at like a local speedway picking up garbage and i was like i'm going to be the best garbage picker upper you know and and then I sold newspaper subscriptions. And I was like, I'm gonna do the best I can to sell newspaper subscriptions. Like, that's just what I wanna do. So there's a certain level of like grit and, and, and by the way, TV, you guys know, like media, it's tough. Like everybody wants a slice of the, of the media pie. And so it's, it's competitive. And so it's not just about, you know, I've seen so many people I've worked with too that um, have really great opportunities and get in and then become lazy and then they get, you know, they get folded out. And so I would say it's really important to make a good impression, um, to make connections and to just do the best, best gosh darn job you can, you know? <laughs> and, yeah, and to add to that, Logan, and I think one of the reasons why you're so wonderful is because you are kind and mm. kindness goes a long way too. Yeah. You know, we talk I mean? a lot about that on the show. Like yeah. every single person we've ever had on the show is nothing but kind. And Ooh. every person that they know knows them as a kind person. That's why everybody wants to work with them. And that's why yeah. we want them on our shows. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. I mean, and it's, and, it, and, you're so, and you're so lovely for saying that. Thank you. It's, it's something that is so easy for me to like, it's like a no brainer. Right. Um, but the job's tough too, you know what I mean? Like I know um, long hours, right? Long hours, a lot of expectations. Um, and the biggest thing I try to instill is a really awesome um, culture and DNA within the teams because, you know, unfortunately one bad apple spoils the bunch, right? And so you really wanna try and keep the energy alive make people feel appreciated. That's something that I'm really, really, really passionate about is the power of thank you um, and showing gratitude and appreciation for people's time, energy, and just their talent. Um, but also like, you know, just trying to have fun. You know, unfortunately with COVID, um, we've had to like, you know, trim back the, the outings and the drinks and the kickoff dinners and stuff like that. But, um, you know, with season one of I Can See Your Voice, we were so lucky to have a kickoff dinner um, before COVID hit. And um, and it was great because a lot of those same team members came from season one to season two. And there is a DNA of that show that everybody always says, like, I've never worked with a group of people like this. And I take a huge, um, I, I take the responsibility very serious to like make sure that people are fulfilled and leave the job with their bucket full. You know what I mean? Like. Like they come in and like, we are like, you know what? Like, you're amazing. You're awesome. You're here. Let's do this. We're going to make some magic. And yeah, I just want people to like go on to their next job and be like, that was, that was awesome. You know what I mean? And, and I know it's always going to be long hours and it's always going to be tough 
tough work and, and expectations always, you know, get, get up and up and up. Season two was, was a good example of that. Um, but we have fun while we do it. You know, that's, that's the goal. Yeah. That, heck yeah. That's awesome. And my mom always said, my mom always did say, um, and not that there's anybody that I had to do this with, but like, if you're ever in a challenge, kill them with kindness. You know what I mean? So like, even those that like, maybe do get under your skin a little bit, you're just like, can I get you a cup of coffee? Like, you know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> Two maybe? Two, Two cups? maybe, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's so really, really special to hear too, just because, you know, it is, it can be in a lot of different circumstances and actually, unfortunately, in a lot of jobs and career fields, it can be really, really tough to find a group of people that you really connect with and that make you feel important and make it feel fun and make it feel special and make you feel important and like you're worthy of being there. So yep. it's it's wonderful to hear that that's that's the environment and that's that's the atmosphere that's going on there. That's fabulous. Yeah, yeah. And, and I will say that you know I I share that same passion with you know the executive producers of the show with the network and and you know everybody wants um, to make a, a great show, right? And 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 but the the intent and the 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 people behind it and all, and all of those elements um, that go into it, especially with I can see your voice. Um, has just been so it's been it's been for me like one of the best shows I've ever done in, in terms of like culture and and you know and, and the vibe and and the DNA of of who we are as as um, I can see your voice so yeah well I also wanted to shout out I'm wearing my Bow Wow shirt today um, <laughs> which I bought after the episode so I love Bow that. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> got it, got, I just got I can't that. stop saying you know he'll always be Lil to me yeah <laughs> all right. I know we, well. just Bow Wow now just Bow Wow, <laughs> bow wow. just drop that uh, one. so before we get into our game Logan one of the other things we wanted to ask you about was your love for the iconic Katie Couric um oh just God. wow we love her how dare you how dare you <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean when you say iconic I mean hold on wait one second hold on wait that's what I'm it's uh, um hold on, hold on. legendary I mean she is I know right <laughs> thank you so much she is um <laughs> She is. Oh yeah. First of all, I grew. Up, so we talked about Bob Saget, right? And we talked about like being in America's America's dad. I think Judith uh, Judith said that right. Yeah. And um, Katie Couric for me was like every morning with a, a plate of Eggo waffles and a <laughs> cup of juice, like narrating my childhood. Do you know what I mean? Like that voice, that tone, the cadence of how she talks. Um, she also, for me, like for whatever reason, I've always been interested in news and I always wanted to get into news. Um, and uh, sh she's just been somebody that I've always just found very fascinating. And so I actually bought tickets to go see Katie Couric when she was in town. And um, it's, it's a really funny story. So I got the tickets to Katie Couric Live, the VIP tickets. So we got to do a meet and greet and go and say hello. Um, and we got to chat with her for a little bit, which was amazing. And then there's a photo on my Instagram of us together. And the other, the person I brought with me was the one, the only, the iconic um, Adriana McPhee, who is one of the vocal coaches from I Can See Your Voice, also um, sister to um, Catherine McPhee from mm -hmm. Idols, Smash, mm -hmm. et cetera. Um, and when I called her, or I was texting her, and I was like, hey, I was like, who can I take to Katie Couric? Who would appreciate the Couric as much as I? <laughs> um, and so, and so I was like, Adriana, of course. So I, I reach out to Adriana and I say, Hey, I got tickets to Katie, K A T I E, um, wanting to know if you want to come and join me. Um, I got like VIP, you know, the front row seats. And she's like, Oh my God, that sounds so fun. She said, You'd actually be surprised how many lyrics I know of hers. And I was like, Oh, she oh thinks no. I'm talking about Katy Perry. Not, not Perry. And I was like, first of all, offended that she thought that I didn't know K A T Y from K A T I E, right? Mm. Like, there's two, we're talking about two different cases. Okay. Anyways, I was like, not Perry, Couric. And she just sent back, she was, I think, at the uh, ATT store. And she's like, I'm literally on the floor of the ATT store dying laughing. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I mean, we went and saw Katie Couric, and it was such a great afternoon or evening of of um the journey she also for me was um the the i, I hate to say this because i don't want to like make her 
I don't want to like age her, but like there is like a motherly aspect to her. And um, uh, when 9-11 happened, um, she was the voice in that classroom for me that was talking mm-hmm. us through it. And mm-hmm. so there was something, you know, my mom wasn't there in that moment because we were all in different places. She was at work, I was at school. Mm-hmm. And Katie Couric will always be that calm voice that kind of talked me through a national tragedy. Um, I never and, thought about that. Oh my God, that's so accurate. Yeah. Holy and, shit. And, yeah, and, and, and so it was, you know, it was that. And then, you know, of course, somebody had just mentioned the, the 2008 Palin interview, which was iconic and legendary in itself. Um, but she's had so many moments like that. I mean, she literally had a colonoscopy on live television. Um, she's done so much for Stand Up to Cancer. Um, she's, and her book, I did her audio book because again, the voice, um, and it's really funny because a lot of the things in my life have always been audio based. So working on a show called I Can See Your Voice is kind of perfect for me. Um, but yeah, I mean, like it was just such a great experience to go through it the first time. Uh, I went through the audio book a second and a third time. Um, and, uh, I did get a, a copy of her book signed for myself and for my sister, uh, and gave her for Christmas. So, but yeah, Katie Couric, I mean. She's amazing. Yeah. Can you imagine Katie Couric as a celebrity panelist on I Can, I can See Your Voice? Yeah. I would literally die. I was also like, I thought you were going to be like, can you imagine if we had Katie Couric with us right now? And then you were just like, welcome, Katie Couric. <laughs> we, we, and then we, I we, jumped we, out the window because yeah. that's too much uh, for me. <laughs> it was just good. And she follows me on Instagram, which I, I was going to say. And we, we messaged back and forth. I, I told her that I, because I unfortunately got COVID a few months, like, uh, oh, over no. Christmas. I know oh. I got it right before Christmas. So this is the shitty part. I went to an event for work. Long story short, um, I got COVID and I was supposed to leave for my parents' house that uh, the next day. And so and it was the first time I was going home for Christmas since 2019. Oh. So I was really bummed and we had to pivot and it was the whole thing. But um, I had posted that I had got COVID on my Instagram and she had reached out to see like, how are you? How are things? Like, so she's not only like just a trailblazer and a journalist a, a, amongst journalists, but um, she's also a kind person, you know, ah, which, which you do talk about the kind people. It's We love important. them. Yeah. We, we collect them. We love kind people. Uh, also, thank goodness you're okay, Logan. Cause... Yes, I know. Gosh, Good it Lord. was not fun. I don't know if anyone else had it, but like it was not fun. And um, yeah, it's just... Thank God, you know, a double vax boosted and just a Good. little bit of a fever situation. Yeah. And then, um, you know, and then I got some alone time. My partner and I, different, you know, downstairs, upstairs for about 10 days. Awesome. And I got meals left out my door like I was uh, at the uh, Eastern State Penitentiary. But um, well, I was going to say, then, then you can listen to your Billy Porter song as loud as you want right? to. As loud as you want to. Sorry. Every, <laughs> my time. Every morning, every my time. <laughs> Well, Logan, so yes, we have a game. Um, this okay. is a game of would you rather. There is no wrong answers. Okay. Oh, so whatever okay. you pick is correct. And so, um, Danica, do you want to kick it off? Let's do it. Okay. All right. Oh, would you oh, rather oh, <laughs> cast a show about talented animals oh, or gosh. cast a show about talented babies? <laughs> you know, there is a saying in Hollywood, I don't work with animals or children. Children uh-huh. or animals. Yep. Um, I will say, I, I did work, when I lived in Australia, I worked with about 22, 12 to 18 month year old. Um, and it was a journey of a lifetime. Um, but it also was like daddy boot camp for me, right? When like, when I have kids, like I'm excited that I have that experience under my belt. 22 um, of them? <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, God. just call me, uh, just, just call me more. the Hannigan. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Ooh, um, right? Okay, and I have worked with a lot of animals, um, but I've never done an animal show. So this is a really interesting one for me. Um, you know, the crazy person inside of me says I would love to work on a show about cra- about talented babies. Okay, talented babies. That, yeah, because I love animals, but I haven't done a show about it with, with any babies. So okay. it'll be a new challenge. <laughs> Can't I wait mean, to see what the phone's gonna call that. tomorrow and it's gonna be Gerber, baby, like company be like, hey, we got a project for you. <laughs> Look, it might happen, it could happen. Anything could is happen. possible. Okay. Gerber Swings, the new hit show. Yeah. You're right. <laughs> he can cry in a high E. All right, here's the next one. <laughs> okay, would would you rather compete on Alter Ego on, or compete on Next Level Chef? Oh my gosh. Okay, well, first of all, quick shout out, Alter Ego, catch up if you can, 2B Fox Now. Um 
I love Alter Ego. It was, again, one of my, I, that was a project of mine near and dear. We cast it. We, we, I produced it. Next Level Chef um, is right after I Can See Your Voice on Fox. Um, and such an incredible show. Gordon Ramsay just, you know, being Gordon Ramsay. Um, <laughs> Oh gosh. Okay. Well, okay. So I have to boil this down to like what my talent would be. Hmm. And I told you vodka soda unlocks the rock star in me. So Hi. I would probably say alter ego because I'm probably would be confident if I didn't have to go on stage because I would just get nervous. Okay. But I'm not that good of a cook. So I would say probably consider <laughs> an alter ego. Okay. Alter ego. Yeah. Alter ego. I, yeah I, I, I do make a really good um, uh, delivered pizza. So oh, that would be my oh, the best. Oh, yeah. I expected you to say egg and waffles. Oh, yeah. egg and waffles. Yeah, I make a good toaster right. strudel. So, oh, uh, there perfect. You go. Yep, you're hired. <laughs> All right. <Personal> chef. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Would you rather recast The Breakfast Club with modern actors or recast Clue with modern actors? Ooh. Okay, well, no shade to Breakfast Club, but I would say probably Clue because of the mystery, that like element of, you know, it's not horror, but it's like horror, you know what I mean? It's got like, I used to have a, two games I used to play all the time as kids, Clue, and I was always Miss Scarlet. And no, <laughs> um, I was um, Professor Plum, but I also had this um, board game called 13 Dead End Drive. Do you guys ever play it? Yes, I it believe was like, we had. It was like, it was like a marriage between um, Mousetrap and Clue. Mm -hmm. And it was like, there was different things. So like, if you, if you land on the fireplace, then you got like flipped into the fireplace and you died. It was actually kind of morbid. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> for children. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, so I would say clue um, for sure. Okay. Flame? I, I probably know that entire movie backwards and forwards, like literally yeah. every word of that movie. Well, really? Tim Curry, we watched everything with him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Such we a love. We yeah. love. All right. Here's the next one. Would you rather... Ooh, enter your dogs into a fashion show or enter your dogs into a Westminster dog show. Speaking of dogs, oh I don't know if you can Okay, well, first of all, wait, hold on. I have to be the proud dad, right? I have to show a photo of my dogs. Yes, so that way as you should. Context. Mm -hmm. So here is Baron Pepper. <laughs> wait, there we go. Oh, my goodness. Good? Okay, so see that? Who, who, who is who? I, I, I don't want to assume. Bear is the big husky and Pepper is the little um, black terrier. Okay. Um, okay, so now that we know that we're going to be dealing with those two little beauties, um, mm -hmm. fashion show or Westminster dog show? I would have to say fashion show because I don't, I think that there, <laughs> Bear is much more, when Bear is my partner's, I mean, you know, quote unquote, my partner's dog and then mine, Pepper's my dog. Um, but I would say that we would probably be better with them in fashion than okay. in Westminster, like tricks and and yeah, all of the properness. Plus, look at that dog with like it looks like a mom. Oh my gosh, it's so gorgeous. I know. Um, yeah, like, who anyway, doesn't want to see say, a dog in a beret? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, come on, let's be honest. Let's be honest. And I can just think all of the different like like arrows we could go through. I'm seeing like an yes. Austin Powers look. I'm seeing yes. like a. In a, in a 70, you know, just like some, something for every, you know, every era. Decade. Uh, yeah. Fair. Good, oh, good yes. answer. All right. Sold. All right. <laughs> I think this one's you, Dan. Oh, that's me. Okay. Ah, uh, yes. So, Logan, would you rather wear a Canadian tuxedo to every, to a prospective... Well, I feel like I'm wearing that shirt right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, imagine that, but also with jeans and a denim jacket over it. Yeah. So, would you rather okay. wear a t Canadian tuxedo to a prospective client meeting or wear a velour tracksuit to a prospective client meeting? Okay, so I feel like the one on the right is Katy Perry's dad. Like, that is what <laughs> Katy Perry's dad works, wears all the okay. time. Okay. Um, I, I feel like because I have more pieces of the Canadian tuxedo that I would have to go a Canadian tuxedo. And I also feel like there's some people in LA that, like, get away with it. <laughs> but I don't know if I can get away with a tracksuit. Plus, okay. I can never find a tracksuit. I'm six foot eight, so right. I can never find a tracksuit that is in my size. Ever. Well, we'll have to get it custom created. Like a custom, made, yeah. like we'll a have custom, have, custom blue. We'll have, this is where Seth is watching, and he'll, he'll send me a, a custom tracksuit afterwards. Okay. Um, from I can <laughs> see your voice costuming department. Oh, oh my god! Shout out. Very comfortable. So. 
<laughs> oh, wait, wait. Can I even start a story really quick? Now that yes, I just brought something up, which is we all had a vision for what you were going to be wearing. All Me? of us had a vision. Yes, you on the oh, show. No. <laughs> like we all had like this vision of oh my AirPods are about to die. Hold on, let me see what I've can you still hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, cool. I'm gonna charge this one while we're talking. So um we all had a vision of like what you were can you still hear me? Yes. Okay. So we all had a vision of what you were going to be wearing on the show. And we all had like different ideas. And we had like a mood board, right? Of like, oh, like, you know, like this, like this, like this. And we weren't seeing anything come in that we were like really excited about. And so I went home one night and I just started looking up like rhinestone ones. I don't even remember what the term was. I was look, I was Googling all this stuff, right? <laughs> or, 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 or Amazon, because I was looking on Amazon, 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 Amazon. The next day, Jesse calls me and he's like, so our whole search history is of like this like, Diamond rhinestone, like one, <laughs> like what's going on, Logan? Like, what are you? Like, uh, you're a man of my heart. <laughs> yeah, it was like all this, like women, I don't want to say lingerie because it wasn't lingerie, but it was like all these women's, like, like performance tops. And um, just like, and then the Billy Porter thing happened, and it was a whole, yeah. So, let, let me tell you this the, the, one of the biggest questions that I've gotten since the show is if people can borrow the jacket that I wore, which I have to then sadly let them down and tell them I did not get to keep the jacket because <laughs> I would probably be wearing it right now. I was oh, going to no, say, I, did I you get to keep it. the jacket or no? You didn't get to keep the jacket. No, no, I didn't get to keep the jacket. Well, we'll <laughs> figure that out. We'll find the jacket and we'll we'll send it to you. I'll say that now and somebody will yell at me for saying that later. But we'll No joke, it. she would literally wear that every day. Like, <laughs> I, I, love I, I had jacket. to pull it up because I couldn't remember what you wore, so I'm looking at it right now. It was that, it was that. Um, it's like multicolor, like rainbow. Multicolor, sequence. yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right, yeah. we'll work on it. We'll work I, on I it. Live, I live oh, in sequence. God. Okay. All right. <laughs> Got a couple more questions. Back okay, to cool. you. Okay. Would you rather cast someone based solely on reading their resume or cast someone based solely on their voice? So you're not looking at them. You can't hear them. You can't see them. I would only hear their singing voice or their speaking voice. Speaking voice. Oh, Mm. Well, I would have to say the voice, simply because it gives me more of a dynamic than a piece of paper. I have had so many, unfortunately, um, interviews with prospective producers, you know, AP, whatever, um, that looked great on paper, but um, didn't pop in the room. So I would mm -hmm. hope that I would, my spidey senses would be able to pick up on their voice that they would be exciting and dynamic and they would, you know, have the energy mm -hmm. behind their, their, their vocals. Okay. Um, I but will I will say, say, I've been surprised by, by that happening. Like I've, you know, in speaking to, to people and, you know, especially casting people working with a lot of actors, trying to cast for musicals and things like that, where you go, there's no way that that kid can hit an, a high E. And like me, probably, you probably wouldn't know that I can probably, I think I hit an F last time I actually went to a vocal coach. Wow. It was That's amazing. Ridiculous. And it's yeah. like hearing somebody's speaking voice is so sometimes not indicative of how they actually sing. That is, Ooh. it's so strange, especially when you think about people that have like accents um, mm -hmm. where it's like somebody that has a British accent, you would never know when they're singing a, an English song because Americans and Brits and Aussies and the Irish, like everybody sounds the same. Mm -hmm. It's very strange. So I it's just very strange. <laughs> yeah. Well, and also you brought up a good point with this, with this question, which is, um, or a good point, which is the casting process for I Can See Your Voice. Um, you know, I don't see anything until um, the producers have talked to the potential secret voices. And the way that the tapes are put together is it starts off with a clip of them lip syncing. And then it's a, um, a, a clip of them talking about who they are. And then it's a graphic of are they good or are they bad? So we play the game as producers and executives and we pitch them that way just to see if we can even in the cast stage pull the wool over the eyes. So mm -hmm. I don't often get to see or, or know if people are good or bad until we do those casting tapes, um, which is a lot of fun for me too. But um, so that's why when you said about their voice, I was like, I kind of do this already with I Can See Your Voice where right. we just try and you know pull the trigger based on 
on their singing voice. But um, uh, yeah, it's 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 a it's a it's a good question, and um, uh, yeah, I would say voice, I guess. Done. All right, we got a couple more, Logan. We don't want to keep you too much longer. No, you know, you got to do. All right. Well, well, this is one of my favorites. So, would you rather see an Andrew Lloyd Webber production of Dogs, or see a Shakespearean adaptation directed by Lin Manuel Miranda? Oh my gosh. Well, first of all, hats off to like whoever's writing these questions because they're so good. It's us. <laughs> it's us. <laughs> these two. These girls right here. Yeah. Um, yeah. I would say that I would do. Oof, I just saw Hamilton for the first time. It was amazing. Yep. So I would go a Shakespearean adaptation, a hundred percent. Because while I would be interested to see what Andrew Lloyd Webber did with dogs, um, <laughs> for whatever reason, I'm still scarred by Jennifer Hudson and uh, you know James Corden in <laughs> the Cats movie. Um, but so, Sir Sir Ian McKellen, though, somehow, I don't know how he did it, but it was as if he broke out of that CGI and was like, I'm fantastic. I'm, I'm fantastic, amazing. yeah. It was yeah. insane. Uh, yeah. I, I also would say that um, uh, it would have to go with an asterisk that um, James Corden wouldn't be allowed to be in the Shakespeare oh, adaptation. No. <laughs> he'll, he'll, he'll find a way. He will find a he way. He always finds a way. Always. He dresses up and he just weasels his way in. Have you seen the whole protest about him not being in Wicked? I have, yes, yeah. and I did sign it. You did. Okay. <laughs> I, I don't know who would he be, the wizard? I, I don't know. Okay. I don't, well, let's not even put that on the universe. No, right? it's not. It's no, not happening. No, no, no. It is not. No, no, All right. No. Here's the next one. Okay, would you rather ooh, have the ability to teleport or the ability to read minds? Hmm. Depends on the day of the week. Um, I would say the ability to read minds is very appetizing. However, I would say the ability to teleport because I just, I don't live close to my family. And so it would be great to just like sneeze and be at the dining room table and then sneeze <laughs> and be back to my desk. Um, oh, so you have so. to sneeze with it is, is what I'm getting. Oh yeah, that's, of that. course. Yeah, we have right. to absolutely sneeze. Okay, sneeze. Um, got it. But, got it. but yeah, I would say the ability to teleport, right? Sure. Yeah. Wait, what did you guys it. choose? I want to know what you, on this one, what you guys would choose. Teleport. I don't want to teleport. know what anyone's thinking, especially my husband. So I'm like, I'm <laughs> teleport. I think, I think teleport. I'm on that same page. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's, you know, people's minds are much more dangerous than we think. Mm. And I don't know that I, I mean, I watch enough true crime as it is. I don't know if I want to know the actual depths of human depravity. Right. I think I just want to like go other places. <laughs> like, right, right, right. Yeah. But if it's animals, that would be a different scenario. Oh, like if yeah. I could talk that's, to, yeah. That's, yeah, I agree 100%. with that 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> sugar gliders are weird. And so I, <laughs> I, I'm confused. So I'm, I'd, I'd love to know what my, what my glider babies are thinking. All right. I think we got one more, right, Danica? Okay. Sure. Okay. <laughs> All right. Would you rather have a panel of celebrity judges from the 1950s or a panel of celebrity judges from the 1980s? Oh my gosh, this is a tough one. I'm assuming for for I can see your voice. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, I would say have a panel of celebrities from the 1980s. I mean, I just think it was such a not that the 50s wasn't um, a fun era, but I think it was a different. I mean, obviously it was a different era, but it's there's something that's just like I think leans into the creative and the like songs and the artists that we often are able to explore on the show that I think would be a little more cohesive than um, like the catalogs of, you know, Temptations, Elvis, mm -hmm. you know, that. I will say though, this season, we do have um, uh, some some music that does expand into um, a, a wider selection of eras. So we just yeah, try to crack the, 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 the catalog open a little bit more. Oh, I'm very excited for that. Yay! Well, I can't wait. I mean, like, look, I already know what I'm doing every Wednesday night at 8 p.m. I mean, Eastern. Yeah. And I'm at home, <laughs> like you said, with my family, eating the popcorn, watching the show. I mean, like, <laughs> it's just, uh, I, I feel like it's one of those shows that, like you mentioned, we're living in this all alternate weird time right now right yep. like nothing is normal but that's the type of show that you can watch and literally forget about the world around you for at least an hour right you well, know it's like 
Yeah, and I think I think that it, 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 the show is. Um, oh, oh, thank you guys. It's so sweet. <laughs> I think that um, the show is. It has a ton of heart. You know, it, it starts at the beginning with you know finding these secret voices and 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 finding the right songs and having the right moments. But um, the magic has, thank God, and hopefully we continue to um, translate to each episode. And, um, you know, it, it's just, it's fun to make the show and it's fun to play the show. Um, we shot it, when did we shot it? We shot it um, back in March. March, almost a year ago. Um, so some of the nuances of the episode I forgot. So it is a little bit like I'm watching it for the first time. Um, but I will say that, um, you know, I'm so thankful for each and every secret voice that has come on and been willing to be a part of something that is a little bit kooky, a little bit wild. <laughs> you know, you're, you're kind of put through a little um, a little ringer of, you know, doubt, you know, like, you know, trying to figure out if you are who you are. And it's all in good fun. And it's all for somebody to walk away with um, some big money. And I, I, I cannot tell you how many people have said that moment when you and Jewel started doing your duet, the tears that just like my mom <laughs> told me she's cried. I was in a call earlier where somebody said they cried. I got the clem. Um, like it's just, it's a really cool moment. And you got emotional during that moment as well. Oh my God. Like it's like, like I said, I don't know what I'm legally allowed to say, but I think because, um, and I mean, if you haven't seen the episode and I'll be like, you mentioned, like I was just saying with Joel, I think because I knew, I knew what the outcome was going to be, but nobody else did. <laughs> and I knew that this woman's life was literally changing forever. Plus the jewel thing. Like, I don't want to undersell that. Like, holy. Yeah. But I think like, cause I, you, what, what you're watching on the show is what's actually happening. We're really standing there waiting for our part to kick in. Yeah. And so it's like, as Tension. that time is happening, I'm like, Attention. oh my yeah. God. It's like, uh, just what, and like, what, even, what, even as a, a spectator watching this, she called me after it happened and told me what happened. Like, I, like I'm, we're best friends. She's going to tell me, but like, and of course I can't fucking say anything for so long, but even watching it and knowing what happens, of course I know that she can fucking sing, like, but of course the whole time I am still just like pins and needles. I'm just like, Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. It's so anxiety inducing. I'm just like, I, I know what's happening, but like, I can't, I can't keep it together. No, it's it, it it's a wild insane. experience and and by the way like not a lot of people have been able to you know just because we're a newer show um there's only a small select group of people that have gone through this process and have been you know especially the winners club the, the winner's circle is is very small and so um for you being a part of that that tight-knit group is is exciting i wanted to ask you because i had watched the episode before we hopped on today just as a refresher of your experience and your journey you said at the end of the episode that um, some of her music got you through some some stuff in your life. I'm just curious which songs they were. Like, are we talking like Foolish Games? Are we talking like, um, uh, yeah, which, which song? I Was Meant For You. So her entire, l let me look up the name of the album because I, I, I don't want to get it wrong. But I believe it was her first album that she put out, literally came out in a time of my life where I grew up with it. Like, um, okay, let me see. The song... Who will save your soul? You were meant for me. And when I first knew that I wanted to get into music, um, Jewel songs were just literally like the. I actually did like an album of Jewel cover songs. Like when I was, um, it's in the pocket for you. But yeah. I never sang "Standing Still," so like that was really cool getting to like do something different. But. Yeah. I, I feel like, you know, Danica and I, like we were literally raised at that perfect time when Jewel said things that we couldn't necessarily express ourselves. Mm. And so and it was like- she's, she's not that much older than us, but so it was like, she's such a unique role model for us specifically. Cause it was like, we were interested in music stuff, but we're like, but I mean, if she can do it and, and she's doing it all on her own and like every, oh yeah, she was. Yeah, iconic. Pieces of You, Pieces of You was that album that mm -hmm. like, it just, it feels like family to me almost. Yeah, um, yeah, I was gonna say it's like a big sister almost. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And also shout out to Jewel, Queen of Hearts, Matt oh, Singer. <laughs> Jewel, yeah. well, you know, and by the way, like just one of the most down to earth, I can remember, you know, when we book the, 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 
um, the singers for the show. We got hop on a Zoom and she opened up her camera and they should have tapestry behind her and like just so Jewel. She was sitting with a guitar. <laughs> so I was like, do we interrupt like a sesh? Like what's happening? But like, but she's just such a great human being and and she was so kind and so nice and so genuinely um, invested in the show. And and when you found, I can't remember how. Uh, how many days or weeks out you found out that you were going to be singing or potentially am, singing with Joel? Am I allowed to say? Yeah, say. How long did you know? We found out the day before. Two days. Day before. Maybe it was two days before, but we didn't know the song till maybe a day and a half before. I think we yeah. all assumed it was going to be meant for me. Or right. And then standing still, I was like, oh, yes. I, I was so happy. To it's such a, I think it came down to um, BPMs. I think it came down to standing oh. still was just a little bit more upbeat. Um, yeah. But also, um, you know, people's schedules changed last minute. So it's like that, like, cup game. It's like where we put people around. So, um, but, I, you know, unfortunately, and I'll just say this um, very broad stroke-wise, but um, season one, we had um somebody that uh fell out at the last minute and so we had to kind of scramble and have all the secret voices learn a whole new song the morning of um and you know it, it but you know it's professional that's the thing we bring people on for the most part that are professionals in whatever they do maybe not professional singers but professional in whatever they do and that translates to the singing and to the performing and so um yeah it's well, I'm, and I'm so glad that you got to have this experience and and you were just such a trooper and um, I'm glad that you were, you made it all the way to the end. Um, just such a, such an awesome, awesome experience for everyone in front of the camera, behind the camera, on at home on the couch. Um, yeah. Thank you. And, and you're good friends with, I didn't realize you were good friends with Josh Randall as well, who is, who is a friend of mine. <laughs> Hi, Josh. So, yeah. Hi, Josh. <laughs> I, I've known Jay Rand for gosh, fifteen years or so, um, and he's. I think he, it's more a, than that. <laughs> no, I don't think that. so. Um, but he he's the type of guy. Like he always said to me, he's like, when the time is right and the project's right, I got you. And this, the time was right and the project is right. So yes, no, yeah. absolutely. Here so, she is. Yes, and, and but what are you? So you kind of know the the forecast of the season and and uh, the celebrity. I'm sure there's been a couple of promos out there. Is there anybody that you're um, excited to see coming up? Um, um as far as the musician or celebrity yeah. wise, because I can well either both. either yeah both. Okay, so I'm a and it happens to be next week, but Joel McHale is like I. I'm That's obsessed. what I was gonna say. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Kelly, uh, Kelly Osborne. Um, for, first of all, but let, let me. That being said, Bow Wow and Cheyenne. I couldn't have asked for for better people. They are exactly who I would want. So I got yes. so lucky. Um, and then I think I, I don't. I don't know like what's been announced and not. But there is another female singer that um, I don't know if I'm allowed to say it. I'll just say it. I'm sure. It'll be oh, fine. Leanne Rhymes. Leanne, yeah, there's been promos with her. Okay, I just want to make yeah. sure I'm not yeah. like because I, I, I did see it on Instagram, like because I know Ken Jong posted a thing like of all the people from the season, and yes. so I was able to like go through and pick people out, but I yes. didn't know what was announced and not. So. Yeah, yeah, Ken put it out there, so it's official. Um, yeah. but yeah, I mean, so great. I mean, there we had so many great, we had so many great singers season one, and we're like, oh my gosh, how do we level up for season two? And then we got people like you know Jewel, we got. Um, Leanne Rhymes, we got Kelly Rowland, we've got, um, you know, just Jason Mraz. I mean, it's it just the list goes on and on and on. Um, and so we're just so lucky. And, and um, I, we're, I'm excited. I'm excited to see what everyone thinks. You know, it's, it's like when you like have a dinner party and like you make all this food and you're like, I hope everyone likes it. <laughs> You know what I mean? I don't like that. Well, I love food and I love reality TV. So I am I am sold. Logan, you are thank you so much. Like this has been thank so much you. fun. It, it's been so cool getting to pick your brain, see a different perspective, talk <laughs> things all things horror, Katie Couric, and of course all of your wonderful and fascinating projects. Uh, before we let you go, any final thoughts you want to leave us with? Um, final thoughts. Well, I think that um, uh, I'm just, I, I just wanted to say thank you to you guys for offering this opportunity to come out and say hello and, and, and chat. And um, I think, you know, 
a, a massive shout out to all of the teams uh, from I Can See Your Voice, Alter Ego, um, Legendary, you know, all, all the shows that I am so fortunate to work on. There's obviously such a, a massive team behind. Um, and, and I just, you know, I'm nothing without my team. And, and I, I truly, truly, truly appreciate all of their hard work and dedication to, um, you know, making moments for television. Um, and yeah, I think, you know, we talked about kindness and I think the world could really just use a big old bottle of kindness right now. And so, um, you know, be sure to tune in <laughs> every Wednesday for your Wednesday dosage of kindness. Um, yes. I, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. This season's going to be great. Stay for the kindness of uh, I can see your voice, and then watch the interesting kindness of Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> well, it's it's a nice um, Jekyll and Hyde. Uh, right. yeah. Yes. Uh, before we do let you go, we're going to go over our upcoming guests that we have uh, tentatively scheduled right now. Okay, so next week we have Jacob Bryant. He is a country music star. Thursday, January twenty seventh, we're going to be back. Clown Biz, oh, I love so much. I love him. I love him. I love him. And then Christopher Lee Parson, who is the voice of Junkrat from the video game Overwatch, among many, many other things, is joining mm -hmm. us in February. Logan, thank you so much again. Thank, thank you. you. I really appreciate it. It was so nice to meet you, Danica, and of course to you see will. you again, wrestling announcer. I'm um, changing my name <laughs> legally to that after this. So I feel like I have to. So. Uh, this has been great. All right, Logan. Well, enjoy your, per uh, I guess we're not calling a premiere, but showing. Of showing the, tomorrow. the screening of screen yeah the screening of screen the screening I know. the screening if you will there you go <laughs> all right guys until next week have a wonderful rest of your night we'll see you guys real soon bye everybody <laughs>